couch potato. Are you tired of being locked up? Have you exhausted all car camping opportunities around you? Heck, you may have traveled to every state park that kept their vault toilets open during this viral slog we just endured. By now, you might be the master of all things local. You've gone and seen it all, or at least what you want to see of it. Sounds like you're in need of a challenge. With the world coming back online, a lot of us overlanders are looking to go exploring beyond our backyard, literally. Perhaps it's time to take on that legit overland trip. You know, cross the border, go to a place that perhaps scares you a little bit, and satisfies that craving for an adventure that pushes you beyond your current skill sets. Where to next? Well, a great place to start is Baja. Baja is an incredible place that one could spend months exploring. It's full of nooks and pockets of epic beaches, lone roads, tough trails, and incredible locals and food. Well, you might say, well, I don't want to go to Baja because I'll get my head cut off. Well, that's just the fear talking. And while you're going to have risk wherever you go in the world, Baja is the perfect training ground for whatever may be next on your global overland bucket list. It's close for us here in the US of A. The locals are awesome, and they're used to us super sucky Spanish speakers going down there due to all the tourism on the peninsula. Frankly, Baja is one of the very best places to spread your wings into a global overland mindset. So I don't care who you are or where you are, put that overland trip on the calendar. We have, and we're headed to Baja. This year's Baja crew is a new mix. My wife Rochelle and I will head up the crew with our experienced members, Ryan Erickson and Tanner Johnson. In addition, we're taking on the Van Stralen crew from Epic Family Road Trap. They've been in training here at Expedition Overland for a few months and are now ready for a trip to learn how we film our adventures. All of us are craving that international new culture, adventure travel trip, or you could say an overland journey. A trip to experience the culture, to be exposed to new things, to struggle a bit, tackle a dream or two, and walk out with an experience that's truly our own. The Baja Special is presented by General Tire. Anywhere is possible and in association with Patriot Campers and PCOR Systems. And Toyota, the official vehicle provider of X Overland. Everything is too far with toys. We have just three short weeks to get the trucks ready for a great time in Baja. So Tanner and I will be heading up the truck upgrades before the rest of the crew starts to show up in a couple weeks. On the vehicle side, we're getting the trucks equipped with our proven loadouts. The seven of us will be in three trucks and a Patriot Camper X3 trailer. The Tundra, also known as Trinity, will do the film production heavy lifting. Trinity has been in service with Expedition Overland for four years now, and has taken us all over the US in the Overland series. It's tackled the Great Pursuit series, from Canada to the Altar Desert and mainland Mexico, and it went on to be the home for the Walthals as they spent over three months traveling as a family in their solo series. Needless to say, this is a proven platform with its p tray system, 35-inch generals, spacious touring interior, a V8 engine, and upgraded long-range automotive fuel tank to haul that X3 trailer for this mission. The Tacoma is getting tasked again with another mission here in Baja. It was the hero build for the Return of the McKinsey series, and then went on to tackle the South America series, and then the Arctic, as the Giordanos tackled the great Arctic winner. But this trip also brings back an old friend, a 2015 Toyota 4Runner, known as the Clone. Back in 2017, Toyota requested that we build them a replica vehicle for the 4Runners we ran in Central America and the South America series. Since its auto tour days, it's been waiting for its moment, and this Baja trip is its opportunity. Now to be clear, in its current state, this truck is Baja ready. In fact, this truck could travel the world in its current configuration with ease. But we know that there are still some areas to improve, mostly in its camping functionality. All of these improvements will keep us busy for the next few weeks, for sure. 
We are in the middle of a big push. Three weeks to go before we launch for Baja. Tanner's getting the, the spindle fixed so we can put new bearings into that swing arm. It gave up the ghost, new bearings going in. That way this truck is drivable. It's going to a couple shops this week. New lower control arm bushings, etc. going in. Once this truck is out of here, we can start tackling all of the other projects that we have on the Forerunner in particular. If we get it all done, we're gonna make the Baja deadline. I'm looking good. We take out the old hidden winch system and beef it up with CBI's covert Baja front bumper, putting the worn winch right back in. Baja is extremely dusty and the snorkel will help pull in cooler, cleaner air from high up versus right off the wheel. Most people think a snorkel is for water crossings, but in reality, it's mostly for dust. When we built the truck back in 2016, a snorkel was not yet available. Next, we install Goose Gear's plate system and rear drawers for better organization and to accommodate a sleep platform. With all the testing this truck has gone through with Toyota, the skid plates are pretty hammered. So we replace them with aluminum skid plates from CBI. This truck got the first original S-Pod screens back in the day. And uh, they just upgraded our S-Pod screens all new electronics and everything in them. It's a better system all around. So anyway, put new ones in. Ryan's working on the front screen, getting that replaced because it now runs off an ethernet cable versus a, like a headphone jack looking thing. And uh, now I got to reprogram it. Wires, yeah. headliners. Oh, no. All right, back for more tools. Putting Nightline on all the vehicles right now, for one, well the Tacoma, this is kind of a, a regular maintenance item at this point. The, the current winch line that's been on there, that is on there, has been on there for years. It may even be the original winch line, which is all the way back from 16. So, we turned the McKinsey, South America, Arctic Series, it's just been through a lot. So we're replacing it with the Nightline, thankfully, which uh, is a direct replacement, but has the reflective line woven into it, it's pretty red. They did a good job of making this seamless and beautiful and it disappeared into the body. You would never know it was there, which is what it's supposed to look like. But taking it apart isn't fun. Maybe we just run the Tacoma over to them and be like, here you go. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's kind of what I'm doing. Well, I haven't found it yet. Still going backwards. You know those vents they put in the back wall uh -huh. of the cab? So yeah. when you open and close your doors, you don't crack your windows? Yeah. It's a great way place to run wires, isn't it, Tanner? I don't know, I didn't run wires. You've never done it there before? I've done it. Well, I've done it on multiple vehicles. Yeah. Unfortunately, it is now behind the Goose Gear back plate. Huh. And what, in what order do you install the Goose Gear back plate, Tanner? then just take the rest of it. <laughs> See, you do half of it and then you do the other half of it. So you're saying that the back plate is the first thing you install, right? Back there somewhere. It comes out of the brain. Comes actually out of the back here. 
this gray cable. Yes. Do you see this gray line? Yes, I do. It drops down and goes underneath and goes behind this panel. And then right in the middle of that panel, you'll see it drop down underneath the truck. It goes through a hole down through the floor and goes to the main body up over there. Okay, so I'm, we just took this winch line off and I'm, I gotta get it bundled up, right? Coiled up. So I come in here and you roll the line to the right length. And then the next time you go in, you grab it back here and you roll it underneath and adjust the size if you have to. And then the next one is over the top and the next one roll and underneath. And what this allows you to do, I'll, I'll throw this one out. Go ahead and point the camera that way. When it's flaked correctly, hopefully this works on camera, of course, you can do this. And it all goes out, flakes out nicely. How many times have you flakes thrown a coil out there and it just goes blah, a big mess. So this is how you avoid that. Uh, basically what I'm doing is keeping it even on the drum as it's rolling up. So I'm just kind of guiding it in so it doesn't go too far forward one way or it doesn't ball up on one side. So it's just evenly going back and forth, getting it on the line. Watching fingers, make sure it's lined up, centered, and then tap it and then one more. And that's it. Aha! <laughs> yes! My new wire will go from here to the new S-Pod, the new screen up front. So this truck has roughly 65,000 miles on it. Almost all of those miles have been expedition or big trip miles, crossing deserts, continents, whatever. Running a bigger tire, running a bigger suspension, having a lot of uh, heavy duty use put to it. And we've had this clunk in the front end that we haven't been able to diagnose till just recently. And uh, it's been diagnosed that it's the steering rack. We think that we could run Baja on it. It would get worse and worse over time, but we could do it. But why would you go on an expedition knowing that you've got a problem with a certain part, especially a critical part like a steering rack? So we ordered one. Come to find out there, 75 of them are back ordered in the country due to everything going on. But we're very lucky we got one. Uh, one randomly showed up, so we're gonna get this to the shop and get a new steering rack in it with just enough time to do some testing on it before we leave on the trip. And uh, so yeah, I'm feeling very good about that. The days are growing short, but the work is getting done. All that's left to do now is pack the trucks. long-range automotive fuel tank is the last big install to finish. This provides us with 30 more gallons of fuel and will be very helpful in Baja's remote areas. Well, this morning is one of the best preps that we can do before we do a big overland trip, and that is medical training. So much of us, we just go on trips have all the cool gear, built up these cool trucks, but we haven't done anything for this on how to take care of ourselves. So that's what we're gonna solve today, or at least get a start on. We're gonna do a wilderness first aid class from uh, Aries School of Medicine. They're out of Missoula, Montana. We've worked with them for years. And uh, over the next two days, we're gonna get as much education as we can on how to maintain ourselves on a big overland trip, such as Baja, which is in about a week from now. If you let me know. If my patient was unresponsive and actually couldn't speak to me, I'm looking for several different pain responses. Hang with me. Stay with me. Don't go into the line. Carol and Peter Van Stralen join us so that their whole family will be trained and ready for their future adventures. Imagine she has some injuries, so very gently getting your hands underneath. 
Yeah, that was really good. How'd that feel? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Okay. So you can so, uh, help yourself. Yeah. <laughs> Which way that way? Whenever you go into an overland trip, assume there's gonna be problems. And that's the fun, is the, ch the problem solving of the problems, right? All that to say, we have shifted into the mindset of we're only looking for wins, not problems, because it's defaulted that there are going to be tons of problems. So from here on, we look for wins, not the problems. Kind of hit me this morning that the trip's actually happening. We're leaving tomorrow, so I, my mind's gone. There's so much stuff going on right now. I don't even know what to think, but I am excited. It's gonna be hard for me to sleep tonight. What? He's in the drawer. In this one? Yeah. We have for years have never been able to keep track for tent poles. It's a <laughs> exo curse. So yeah, I just found like 15 more. <laughs> I was just looking for those for like a half an hour. They're right I'm under my tent. It is the morning of departure, and it is as you would expect, it's chaos. We're trying to get all the last minute stuff done. I can say that after doing this for 11 years, this still hasn't changed that much. Uh, I guess we're more organized and we know what we need, but it still always comes down to the wire. It's just part of trips, I think. And uh, so yeah, last minute stuff, getting the bags put in the trucks. Um, Got to still do a little bit of title work this morning, things with the registrations to get our vehicles across the border. A little anxious because of all the stuff we got to do, but we're getting it done. Tomorrow, we're going to go straight to the border and cross the border to go to a, a YWAM base where we're going to base out of for three days. That's going to be in just a couple days. Between here and there, if you show choose to accept this mission, <laughs> you will get logged in and do 10 hours of PADI dive certification training before we get to the YWAM base. Oh, and one of the two days that we're there in the YWAM base, you're going to be, the, those are our two water days. Oh, wow. Okay. Wow. And right, wow. <laughs> now, it's 10 hours of online instruction before our first dive day in the water. Oh, wow. And we're going to run through three days of diving in two. Wow. So it's like dive, 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 awesome. no pressure, yeah? <laughs> no pressure. No pressure. And then we'll work our way down to the Baja, mm -hmm. hopefully do a, more diving at the very bottom of Baja before we turn and burn, do more of an off-road trip on the way home. And at the very end, we went in with Ryan's Church and Expedition Overland, and we, we basically bought a house oh, yeah. that is given to a person who has land ownership but is kind of live can't get that next step right. right so we go in there and in like two days we build them a house wow. Wow. and it's <laughs> hand them the keys and leave awesome. that's awesome. awesome so that's exciting that is in the next 20 days wow. <laughs> okay <laughs> <laughs> sounds good mm -hmm. yeah are you ready okay yeah. soak on that <laughs> We gotta go to Idaho Falls. <laughs> <laughs> things I'm super excited about on this trip is we have some younger people with us. I love showing people new things and um, and that's one of the things I really love about Expedition Overland is we get to do fun stuff, we get to share it with you guys and then also get to share it with people we go on trips with. So honestly the, these, uh, these kids we're taking on the trip have spent more time traveling out of vehicles really than we have so it's going to be a great experience for me to uh, learn from them as well and that's something I really look forward to. We had talked about doing full-time adventure, but this kind of kick-started us into it. So we were in Joshua Tree National Park, and we were doing this hike, and when we got to the top of the hill, my dad's cell phone rang, we must have connected to a service or something, and just ding, 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 ding. All these photos came in from my Uncle Tim, who was house-watching for us. 
and while we were there our house was totally destroyed um, robbers had gone in stolen everything they could broke everything else so we headed home and home didn't really feel like home um, most of the stuff that we grew up with or things that we recognize were all gone so that was when we all sat down and we decided that we were going to sell the house and we were just going to do it because we had talked about doing full-time adventure so we had a 2012 uh, Jeep Wrangler and we built it out um, and shipped to New Zealand that was our first trip and I'm going too long now and then we went to Australia some Bali after that then we went to this state that state that state Hi, my name is Caroline Van Sterlin. I am one of the cameras on the X Overland crew. And this is my first time being on an X Overland expedition, which I am so excited and nervous about because I, this is also my first time being a camera for X Overland. So oh, I am really like, sometimes I literally start shaking. I'm so excited and nervous about this whole trip. Um, from beginning to end, even from the planning stages, there's just been so much excitement about it. And now that we've been, now that we've actually left, it almost feels surreal. And I don't know exactly when it's actually gonna sink in, but I don't think it's actually fully sunken in yet. Um, <sighs> this is my first time on any X Overland trip. So I'm, I'm pretty nervous about really making sure that I pull my weight and you know keep up with this top notch team. I have one more consideration on top of everything else is that I was diagnosed with type 1 a few years back when I was 14, type 1 diabetes. So, so from that time I was told that there was a lot of things I couldn't do. One of them namely is I couldn't scuba dive, you know, I can't be a commercial pilot, among a lot of other things. I have to really limit my activity to make sure I have good numbers and be in a place where I can always, you know, be safe. And a month and a half after I was out of ICU in the hospital, we went and climbed a mountain. It, from that time on, I made sure that I always, you know, exceeded what was normal for me to do or what was safe for me to do. So this trip is definitely one of those times where I'm going to be doing that a lot. So I want to make sure that I, you know, stay on top of everything. I've been doing my best so far, running into a few bumps. But, Jeepers! Yeah, monitoring blood glucose levels, my insulin levels, medications and everything else on top of being a member of X Overland, which is a pretty epic job. So that's something I'm a little um, not worried about, but just really focused on keeping in track. So we'll see how it all goes. Really excited about all this. As much as I like to say that I want to get out of my comfort zone and I tell people that all the time, like to get out of your comfort zone, um, it's still a challenge for me and there are definitely a lot of things that still obviously scare me and that make me nervous, but I know that this crew that I'm traveling with right now, they are the best at pushing me to try new things and to get out of my comfort zone and to do my best and be, be my best. And it's obviously nerve wracking. I sometimes get a little bit oof about some of the things that I need to, that I know I'm gonna have to try or do or face and yeah, I look forward to it though. Travel is our lifestyle. No, I can't picture myself doing anything else. There's nothing I would rather be doing. I mean, there's nothing more fun than, to me than uh, being with a good group of friends and hitting the trails, seeing new places, experiencing new cultures. And that's why I'm really excited about this trip because we are going to Baja, Mexico. I also don't usually talk on our videos much, so this is new for me. Yeah, I'll probably just end it there. We got uh, breakfast going and coffee, so. See you guys on the road. Adventure is always guaranteed if you throw yourself in deep enough. It's bound to find you. And that's exactly what we have done. I think we're all going to be reintroduced to ourselves as the chisel of travel shapes our perception of the world and perhaps ourselves. 
to join us as we drive south of the border and navigate our first major setback of the trip. <laughs>